This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. By the time Brian Koberger gets to court for a trial, it'll likely be close to three years since the crime took place that he's alleged to have commit killing four college students at the University of Idaho just uh, around Thanksgiving time of 2022. Why so long to determine what took place in such a short period of time? Well, it is a capital murder case. A man's life does hang in the balance. But still, why three years to determine what happened over the course of a few hours? There's a lot that they're going to have to to dig through. Prosecution saying they've already gone through about 95% of the evidence, but still we're about a year out as of our recording of this. If, uh, in fact, that is a, a date that they're going to launch this trial about a year from now. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. I know neither of us are attorneys, uh, but what's your take on, on the length of time that this is taking to get to an actual trial? And is it? did we really need to wait this long? Uh, or is this just kind of how our, our system works? Yeah, it probably is how our system works, but boy, it's it's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? It's yeah. it's just years and years, and I realize that they probably have mountains of evidence to go through here, um, and I, I think it probably does serve the defense to have it go on as long as possible. People start forgetting, you know, it yeah. it, it kind of uh, loses its oomph in the media. People are not as fired up about it, but it's sure hard on the families to wait like this. Without a doubt. I mean, some of the statements that had been made uh, in the last week or so, we want to start healing. We do. This is two of the victims, Kaylee Gonzalez and Zana Kernoodle's uh, family uh, issuing those statements. We want to find justice to try to move on from this horrible tragedy. So please, please start making some decisions. Get to work and quit playing the delay game. You're right. I mean, time will uh, work in the uh, the advantage of Brian Koberger uh, in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of things can change between now and then. But but should we have firmer deadlines for, for things like this uh, in, in our country? I know other countries look at our court system and go, wow, this is crazy yeah. how long you guys yeah. allow for this. And, and we try to justify it over here going, well, this and that, and I can every, every defense attorney is going to have a thousand reasons why this is how it works. Does it ultimately end up giving us a better form of justice? Do we end up determining, you know, accurately someone's guilt or innocence by taking all this extra time as compared to other countries who have a, a bit more of a, a swift system of justice? Well, I guess there's probably a middle ground, you know, which, um, you know, we don't want to go too quickly because we want to make sure everything is analyzed mm-hmm. the right way and everybody has a fair shot at it. But it does seem three years seems very ponderous. Mm-hmm. And I don't know enough about all the machinations within the court system that caused this to happen. But I hear this a lot, even from people trying to get through child custody situations that go on for years and years and years. And it's just brutal for everyone. Yeah. And I I would certainly weigh in on the side of we need to be as quick as we possibly can, do it right, but get it moving. Yeah. Uh, Ann Taylor, the attorney uh, for Koberger, uh, it's still up in the air, still asking for that venue change, complaining that the local jury pool has been tainted by extensive inflammatory publicity. Um, it, it's pretty much everywhere. It's not just in yeah. Moscow, Idaho. Uh, yeah. You add that venue. I mean, I, I, she's been a defense attorney. She's doing everything she can, uh, you know, to try and defend Brian Koberger. Uh, but at the end of the day, I know we talk about, you know, there's mountains of evidence. Is there? I mean, really, at the end of the day, is there, we're talking, I mean, as far as we know, the alibi that has been given is he went for a drive. He likes to drive at night. Right. How many, how much, is this isn't, I don't know. It it just doesn't seem like a case that really has a a ton that's going to point in the way of innocent for Brian Mm -hmm. Koberger uh, Mm -hmm. from everything that we know. We have phone pings where he's near King Road. We have DNA at the scene, uh, DNA that's, you know, been crossed every which way now um yeah i mean other than delay i mean are are they really more so than anything here going for a defense of well if we can delay this we can find some sort of technicality i think so maybe we can save your life at the best 
Yeah, yeah. You've got the white Elantra. You've got going back to the crime scene the morning after. Mm -hmm. It's it's like, what in the world? You know, not to mention all his other personality problems and the people that mm -hmm. have come forward and said they felt threatened by him. You know, I try to be cautious about making premature judgments before trial, but this is when it's kind of hard to look at everything that we know, and we don't know everything yet. Yeah. But what we know that's out there and to say, oh, yeah, he's got a, a good shot at exoneration here. So I think you're right. I think it's just yeah. delay, delay, delay and look for any little thing they can use, you know, to to work in his favor. Sick of the ads? We opt to start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.